Hey guys, Lance here. Today, we are going to be talking about the new Wismec Theorem, designed by Jabo, inspired by Suck My Mod. Well, there's been a lot of hype about this RTA. I have a few things to say about it, so let's just go ahead and dive right in. All right, guys, let's get to checking out the Wismec Theorem. So if we take a closer look here, you're gonna have your box. I'm gonna go ahead and spin it around this way. You're gonna notice that there's gonna be a serial barcode on here and an authentic uh, serial scratch off code listed right here, just to verify that your products are directly from Wismec. You are not buying any clones. So if we go ahead and we remove the lid, you're gonna see a couple of different things in here. One of them is gonna be a piece of glass that has a stainless steel sleeve on it. You're gonna have an additional piece of glass just in case you break the original one. You're gonna have your Theorem RTA. That's probably not gonna stand up, so we'll just set that down. You're gonna have a little bag here. It looks like there is a notch coil in there with some cotton already put inside. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the foam. And you're gonna find yourself a little baggy. Looks like to be a control ring, some set screws, and some extra O-rings. And of course, a quick guide starter kit. So let's go ahead and run through some of these parts. So first we'll start off with the parts kit. So in the parts kit, you're gonna notice there's O-rings and some set screws, and this little ring right here is actually gonna be your dual airflow ring. We'll go over that in a little bit once we take apart the theorem. And if we look here, you're gonna notice the notch coil that I had mentioned. Um, it looks like there's already some cotton inside there and it's ready to be installed. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that and put that off the screen. Right here, you're gonna be looking at an extra piece of glass. It looks like the glass is somehow set into this metal sleeve. It does not come out. Um, I, will, I will show you how this works as well afterwards. We're gonna go ahead and remove the extra piece of glass. It looks like it's the exact same size, which it is for the theorem. I'm gonna take that out of the screen too, and we'll go ahead and start breaking down the theorem. Uh, I'm gonna explain how all of the parts work, and I'm gonna do that right after I take the tank apart. But first, we're gonna bring out our Coilmaster jig and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put the tank on here. It just makes it a little bit easier to take it apart. So first, we're gonna start by removing the drip tip. Okay, I'm gonna put everything behind here. You'll be able to see all of these parts after I take it apart. That is our top cap there. We're gonna now remove the glass. That's a little bit difficult. If you don't mind, I'm gonna spin this around so I can take out the coil so you can actually see the build deck. I may have done that backwards. No, we're okay. Okay, so we're gonna take out our notch coil there, and this is gonna be the bottom of the base. So I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew this, and that's gonna be your full dis disassembly for the theorem. So now that we've already disassembled the theorem, let's go ahead and talk about each piece individually. First, you're gonna look at the drip tip. You're gonna notice that it seems to be some kind of Pyrex glass. It is gonna be dual O-ring as well seems to have a good size bore to it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that over here. We're gonna talk about the Pyrex glass. As I had mentioned, this also does come with an extra piece of Pyrex glass and another piece of Pyrex glass that does have a cool design sleeve on it. And of course we have our notch coil with our pre-made cotton in here. Okay, we'll talk about the notch coil in a little bit. And we're gonna take a look at the base here. So this is the part that kind of gets everybody. Not a lot of people understand how to build on this unless they're using the notch coil by itself. But uh, let me go over some things with you. So if you're gonna take a look here, you're gonna notice that this is gonna be your positive post. It's just a regular T post here. Um, it's got a nice big slot in the center. So you can pretty much put whatever size build you want to in here. Maybe do something crazy, some Clapton coils. Uh, something on that level. And of course, these two outer posts are gonna be your negatives. If you take a look down here, you're gonna notice two notches. This is gonna be where everything is gonna wick. You're gonna put your wicks down into the tank, okay? And then on the back side is gonna be your fill hole. If you can kind of see it, you're gonna look in here, you're gonna notice a nice deep size juice well. Of course, this is a tank, so you'll be able to fill up your juice in here. One of the features that I kind of really liked about this was that it is double O-ringed. One of the things that you'll notice about double O-rings is that it's gonna stick a lot better, so when you go to peel off the top cap, 
you're not going to accidentally pull off the whole glass and end up with juice everywhere. Um, another feature that I liked about the O-rings that they used, not only does it come in a cool like teal looking color, it's going to be made out of silicone instead of rubber. After time you'll notice that rubber O-rings do tend to get swollen uh, because of e-juice or any other type of liquid and possibly break. Silicone O-rings I really haven't had too many issues with, so that's one of the things that I like. And then of course, Last but not least, you're going to look on bottom, you're going to see Wizmac on the bottom, um, it says j -Ball on the bottom over here, and you're going to notice a gold-plated 510 connector, okay? So that's pretty much it for the base. Let's go ahead and let's talk about the top cap. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to unscrew this here. Oops, sorry about that. All right. So there's a couple of different pieces here. Um, I don't have a screwdriver on hand, but if you do take a screwdriver, you can remove this airflow blocker, which is actually going to be sitting inside the juice fill hole, okay? And that other ring that you saw inside the package, which is gonna be this one right here, okay? If you notice how there's two different slots on this one, this is just gonna allow you to pull airflow on both sides. And how that works is this little airflow blocker that's gonna plug your, your juice hole afterwards is actually gonna be cut on the inside. So you will be getting airflow to the back of the coil as well. Okay, and that's pretty much it. All right, so that's your full breakdown. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put this one back together. Let's just go ahead and put the dual airflow ring in here. Just make sure everything is lined up, everything looks good. So as you can tell, I've already put everything back together uh, for the most part anyway. I went ahead and I reinstalled the coil uh, into the base of the theorem. Uh, I wanted to explain a little bit about this coil. So uh, the notch coil, I mean, there's been a lot of mixed reviews about this coil. They already come pre-wicked with cotton. I've heard a lot of people also complaining about um, trying to build their own coils in here and them having issues with it leaking. I heard that's why that's a lot of uh, complication between the theorem. Uh, people have been struggling uh, putting this thing together. They have been struggling with it leaking, them turning the tank upside down, unless they're using the notch coil. One of the things that I've noticed about the notch coil was when I personally used it myself, I was running mine at about 40 watts and I really couldn't get anything more than 40 watts out of it without it burning, tasting a little bit funny. Um, it just really wasn't the right vape for me. Um, but if you want to go ahead and take a closer look at the notch coil, I'll go ahead and I'll blow this image up for you. Uh, you're going to notice over here in this area that there's going to be a soldered point um, with a wire lead on it and then there's going to be one more at the bottom. Notch coil is pretty simple. Uh, it's really convenient and it's very easy to install. Uh, that's one of the cool factors that I like about it. But what I went ahead and I did is, is I took another one of my theorems and I went ahead and built my own build on it just to give you guys an idea that you can still build some other stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that now. All right, so this is my build. Uh, I was just kind of goofing around with it. I wanted to play around with the theorem a little bit. I wanted to see how much it can handle. Uh, I've heard a lot of people say they struggle building dual coils on here. I just went ahead and I threw this together like together in a couple of minutes. It's just gonna be your basic clapped in vertical coils, five wraps, I wrapped it on a three millimeter screwdriver. Pretty simple, pretty basic. Um, the cotton's wick nice and fluffy, so hopefully I won't have any leaking issues here. We'll go ahead and we'll test that afterwards and I'll show you how this, uh, this build works and I will give you the advantages and disadvantages of the theorem. Before I demonstrate the notch coil versus my build, uh, I wanted to show you guys one of the issues that I had. So right here I have my juice. I went ahead and I put it inside a unicorn bottle. Um, <laughs> you're gonna see right now. So let me go ahead and let me just put a little bit of juice here on the wicks, put a little bit of juice on the coils, okay? Now, I didn't have this issue when I used a normal uh, dripper that comes inside a regular 15 or 30 mil bottle. I only found this to be an issue with unicorn bottles. So if you go to fill it, notice how it doesn't catch right away. It's not really doing it right now, but sometimes the juice will get stuck and it'll create an air bubble inside this hole and it doesn't allow the juice to go down into the tank. Uh, it doesn't seem to be an issue today for me, but just a heads up for you guys, that was one of the features that I did not like. I'm just gonna go ahead and top this off. 
Okay, now that we have some juice in there, another thing that I wanted to mention to you. This is my sleeve, and I did tell you guys that the sleeve, okay, this sleeve was actually glued onto the glass. Well, mine just fell off. You can actually see residue of the glue inside here, but it did come off. And I actually did chip that glass and it did kind of break a little bit. So that might be something to watch out for. But to show you the difference between the two tanks, my build is going to be the one that is gonna be using the sleeve and the notch coil is not gonna have a sleeve on it. So we're gonna go ahead and demonstrate that for you guys now, okay? Now we're gonna demonstrate the notch coil versus the build that I had built. One of the issues that a lot of people complained about was wicking. I think I found a temporary solution for it. Maybe it's the ultimate solution, I'm not sure. But if you go ahead and you take a look here, you'll notice that my cotton isn't wrapped all the way around the tank anymore. I went ahead and trimmed it right before the base on both sides. And then the other thing that I did was I took this Allen and I went ahead and put it down right in between the wicks, right on the side of the wick. And I did that on both sides so there's a little bit of airflow coming up through the cotton, okay? That seemed to resolve my wicking issue. About the notch coil, I like the ramp up time on it. The flavor is decent. Uh, the cotton that they provide with you isn't the greatest. It kind of tastes like cotton, takes a little while to break in. That was a huge issue for me. And in the Wismec uh, box, they give you the brochure. They actually don't suggest a wattage for you. They don't tell you how many watts to vape it at. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I was only able to vape mine at about 40 watts. So I have my Lost Vape DNA 200 here, uh, the E-Fusion, and I have mine at 40 watts. I'm not gonna vape it anything over that because I don't wanna burn out the coil. I still want to taste the flavor and I want you guys to see how well this hits compared to building your own coil for the theorem. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate this. Decent flavor. I still have a cotton taste. It's not the greatest. Uh, the cloud production, it's okay. It's not too bad. I'm gonna go, go ahead and hit this one more time. It's okay, we'll leave it at that. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna demonstrate the build that I had built for the theorem. Alrighty, so now we are on to my own personal build. It's actually reading at about the same homage that the notch coil is, so it's reading at a 0.25. Uh, same exact thing, only it's dual coils. Uh, you will notice that I do have a different drip tip on here. Uh, I did mention that earlier, I did use my own drip tip. Uh, the sleeve is gonna be how you're gonna tell the difference between the two different builds. So once again, dual coils, clapped in, same exact ohms. I am able to vape mine a little higher. I, did, I do have it at 90 watts. Uh, but other than that, the build is exactly the same. The only difference is, is that I am using the dual airflow. When I did put the dual airflow inside the coil with the notch coil in it, or inside the RTA with the notch coil in it, I didn't have the vapor production. I lost all flavor and it just kind of went downhill from there. Um, but I'll give you my honest re review on building your own coil. Maybe it'll help you out. Maybe you might like it a little better. But let's go ahead and see how this hits. Definitely a lot more vapor production. Um, of course, I'm going to favor my build because I like warmer builds. Um, the notch coil just wasn't enough for one coil. Maybe if it was dual notch coils, I'd be a little bit happier with the build. I'm gonna go ahead and hit this one more time. Okay, as you can see, vapor production is much better. The flavor is a lot stronger. I like my choice of cotton better. I'm just using regular Japanese organic co cotton from uh, Daiso. But other than that, I, I don't really have any complaints about the theorem. I'm not getting any spit back out of it. There was a few things that I didn't like. Like I said, the, the stainless steel ring that's supposed to be glued to the glass kind of didn't stay on my tank. Doesn't seem to be going back on now. But um, other than that, that is, it for the two different builds and that's the comparison. All right guys, so there you have it. I broke down the theorem for you. I talked about the notch coil, I talked about my own personal build, but the one thing you have to remember, this is all my personal opinion and we do wanna hear what you guys think. If you guys prefer the notch coil, if you guys prefer building the theorem yourself, we wanna know about it, so leave us a comment down below. As always, if you guys enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe for more videos just like this one. If you guys are interested in picking up the theorem, they are available for wholesale purchase through ecsupplyinc.com. Until then, I'll see you guys next time.